Oh, how, look how I misquoted. Uh, twice. <laughs> twice today. <laughs> I'm on a roll. All right, let's talk about the weather forecast. 21 degrees now. It was 22 when we got here. It is dropping or it just feels like it. It's cold bundle up. High temperatures today of 49, low of 31. Tomorrow, a little bit warmer with temperatures around 56, low of 31. Yet again, and look at the rest of the week. Not bad, I guess you can say. We'll see abundance of sunshine Friday and Saturday. We'll definitely need it. And then rain on Sunday. Yep, there we it's are outside, better. getting a little brighter out there. There's Frank's truck better. now. What's he doing standing beside the door? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Football season is officially over. Over. Uh, over. Such a depressing time. Yep. And tomorrow, well, of course, is National Signing Day, so that'll be good. And it's. Uh, then we're waiting around for baseball to start. Yeah, oh. I could care less about baseball, but the uh, mm -hmm. basketball season will be winding up here, and everybody will be headed towards Hansville. So, how are things in your household with the two little ones back from Disney World? Yeah, doing well. They're still. Uh, they've been bit by the Disney bug, I guess. So every day, mm -hmm. Isabel's telling me, "I want to go back. I want to go back." So, I bet they had a blast. Yeah, they did. Yeah, you guys had a lot we of fun did. with we, them. We all did. Their ages were they too young to go? Or no, I think it's right. Yeah, I think it's the right age. time. Yeah, okay. the four and two, so they both know what's going on, especially yeah. the uh, Isabel, the older one. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, they talking about it. Fun. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about what you do for a living. You're a criminal defense attorney here at the Dan C. Yeah. Totten Law Firm on uh, Jefferson Street. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff you handle is drug related. Um, vast majority of it. Um, in law school, taking criminal law 101, if you will, uh, the uh, cr crimes are made up of elements. And the joke in school, uh, it's not really a joke as it is a, just a statement. It's the first element of every crime is what drug. Um, you know, the, the unfortunate reality is is that it has something to do with almost every offense that we deal with, almost every offense. Now, when someone gets arrested, I'm, I'm going on all this on personal observation of some of my relatives. Uh, <laughs> no, they they we, won't, we won't go into that. <laughs> the first time, there's a good probability they're going back again. Mm -hmm. They, um, yeah. there's been so many studies about you know recidivism, the getting out, and getting back in, uh, leaving the pen, and then coming back, and even those that don't getting arrested and, and coming back. So over the years, they've, we've developed or we the uh, system has developed several options and programs. Um, if somebody has a drug addiction, probably the worst thing you can do is just try to throw the book at them and put them in the pen for a couple of years. Um, and there are different philosophies as to why. But there are, there are a lot of programs, drug court being one of our favorites here in this county, because um, just our Limestone County Drug Court program with Judge Batts and Tony Gravett over there at Community Corrections and that whole team that he has, mm -hmm. they do such a good job where um, I've actually seen people come to court and basically beg Judge Batts to put them in a penitentiary versus making them stay in drug court. Um, it holds they're them not, accountable. Yeah, they're, they're not real easy on them. Um, there may be some sanctions where they have to spend some time in the county jail, and of course uh, they have to have a job and all kind of stuff. It's a long, intensive program, but uh, I think that we've had some pretty good results with it. Or uh, I keep saying we. Um, the defense lawyer's role is to explain it to the client and be there to support, but I don't want to take anything away from the work that they do. Uh, now, if anyone has a conviction, they basically are pleading guilty to that, but it's kind of suspended until they, they graduate? Have, if they have a charge, uh, charge, the way drug court works is it's usually based on a felony charge. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll make applications in different counties, have different qualifications and eligibility requirements and so on and so forth. Um, in this county, the uh, the district attorney's office will generally review their file and, and they look at a lot of things, history um, and so forth, how many times have they been charged before, how long has this problem been ongoing, mm -hmm. obviously what is the crime, um, you know, an armed robbery or an attempted murder or something is not going to be necessarily mm -hmm. eligible for drug court, but uh, the district yeah. attorney's office will make a recommendation and then we'll make application and then the drug court team will review that particular client. Um, and Except you are not. Basically, they tailor make a uh, rehabilitation program for them. Uh -huh. And uh, not to pick on Zach's buddy here, but uh, you know, like Johnny Manziel, you can't just run off to treatment, come in, and say, "Hey, I'm better." I'm uh, cured. Get, get me in the get me in the drug court. <laughs> well, that's what everybody wants to do. That's right. what it. Yeah. And that's, now, when you're dating, I'm uh, Molly's people are in their twenties, teenager twenties. Are you dealing with when they meet with you? Are you dealing with their relatives, grandparents, parents, whatever? Are you dealing with that person? <laughs> With with us, uh, yeah, we get a lot of calls from brothers, sisters, and moms, but uh, it puts us in a very 
precarious situation. I'm a defense lawyer. My loyalty is to my client. Okay. You know, and the family wants to come to us and say, hey, they have a problem, we want to do this. And our answer is, well, I'm going to do my job, so you buckle up and do yours. And if, if tough love is required, um, you better get ready uh, because we're going to make it hard on them. That's, a, that's our loyalty to our client. However, we do keep in mind, of, keep in mind what is best long term for our client. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we're not we're not a guardian for the client. We are their lawyer. So, so it doesn't matter if the parents came in and paid you. Your loyalty is still. Yeah, I mean that's the that's, that's the basis of our oath. Uh, you know, if the parent says, "Hey, I need to hire a defense lawyer for my client," and it's like that's fine, but um, at the end of the day, that's who we're working for. I explain to a lot of my clients, uh, your defense lawyer is like a hammer. You know, we're a tool in a toolbox. You bring it, you bring us out and use us. You know, not just willy nilly as you wish, but that's sort of what we we are for. Um, and we're there to put options in front of them and advise them one way or the other, and make sure the state does their job. But I'm not, you know, we don't get in the habit of prosecuting our clients on behalf of parents, no. So somebody's watching this morning, they have a loved one or whatever that uh, has been incarcerated or whatever, they need to make an appointment, oh, yeah. come in and skate. Now, you'll meet with the... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, now, don't get me wrong, we're getting hired a lot by um, parents and even grandparents. Um, because that's just the reality of it. A lot of, you know, information is power. And we, we work in this system, we know this system. And we can give you a lot of details on different things that you may or may not know about, even if your loved one has been in the system before. It doesn't mean it's the same way every time. And if it's uh, if you're dealing with one of those un unfortunate situations where drugs or alcohol may be a part of the problem, uh, there's answers to that that do not involve the penitentiary. Um, and and knowing about it right off the bat will help mm -hmm. you. And Especially great for the ones, overcrowding is so what it is today. It is. Too. And wonderful for the ones that actually complete the program and graduate. They can uh, have their record wiped away. Yeah, I don't, I don't have the stats. All I know is in, in our, our Limestone County Drill Court program, the, the job that uh, Tony Graven and his crew and then obviously Judge Batts, um, they don't have a lot that graduate and then find themselves back in the system. We just don't They're see successful. that. Yeah, we're there every other Tuesday. I think they have a drug court docket this morning, as a matter of fact. And you just don't you don't see really? those you don't see those repeat offenders. And I tell them, uh, That's great. Uh, and Judge Batts does when they're pleading in. Uh, it may be easier for you to take the conviction and apply for probation because he's going to put a ring in your nose and put a chain on it. He's going to drag you across the finish line, and it's going to be a lot harder on you. Oh. And take it. Jay has a very, uh, mm -hmm. Anna Franklin has a very successful Program. drug court thing down in. I've been hearing County. some good things about Sheriff yeah. Franklin down there since she's taken office. I know she made a splash when she took over. Right. Mm -hmm. I got a question for. I saw this on Daily Mail today. Mm -hmm. I think it's up in Detroit. Two teenagers, 17, 18 year old boys, were shot and killed and put in the trunk of a car. Two black guys. They had tried to buy some prescription drugs from. But the two black guys that were out, one of them. He was out. One of them was serving, had serving two life sentences for murder. And he was out. So how was he out? I mean, how is that possible? Well, <laughs> I mean, really, I, I'm just, I've said, how is that possible? And then he kills two more. Yeah. Wow. You, you, Thugs. I give you an answer. It's not going to be popular. Um, but does this so, happen? Yes. Well, I'll be yes. There, uh, you'd be surprised. Uh, it's all based on parole. Okay, we have, for instance, the last time I looked at it, which was about two weeks ago, Tutwiler Prison is the only facility in the state of Alabama for women. They're at 221 percent capacity, and if you think about it, they have one bed, they have 2.21 women to sleep in that bed, so to speak. It's double um, the amount there, that there's be only There's only so much of that that's going to go on before the federal government is going to step in and say, okay, you have to be to 100 percent capacity by tomorrow. Somebody has to be turned loose. They consider a lot of stuff on parole. A life sentence in the state of Alabama, there, there, there is a, you can get a life sentence for some offenses and you can get life without parole. If you get a life without parole, unless that conviction is t overturned or something along that line, you will die in the penitentiary. But if you get a life sentence, you will be eligible for parole and it's up to the board of pardon and paroles well, this guy couldn't when. have been in over five or six years. I don't. I don't want to speak on Michigan's, wow. you know, state, but yeah. They're, but they're, that's not uncommon. But that makes sense. So if you get a life sentence, yeah. that means you can still get out on parole, but life there without are, parole. Yeah, you're there, not there, getting there are there are a lot of parolees um, out on the street serving, you know, if you will, a life sentence. Life sentence. Right. Lucas that's Beatty, scary. attorney at law, mm -hmm. criminal defense, and Dan handled your divorce. Your thing about getting D I V O R C E D. Give them a call two three two one two eight seven Jefferson Street, mm -hmm. Athens.
Thanks. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you. All right, we got to take a break. Come back. All the girls been waiting. They've been they here since have. I've been here. They've been Y'all, so hang on. Local in love.